In this video, we're going to have a look at how to use Google Sheets to perform a student's t-test. This video is part two in a series of how to analyze data. Now, the great thing about using a program like Google Sheets uh, is that you don't have to worry about the mathematical formulas involved in calculating p-values from t-tests. You just need to know the right buttons to press, the right cells to select, and it magically spits out that p-value for you to use. So uh, let's jump right into it and see how we can do that. So this is data uh, that I used in my previous video. Uh, and we saw that the beauty of calculating means and standard errors is that we can graph them like this. And then we can see if there's any overlap between the error bars to say with some confidence whether there is or not a difference. Of course, there are new problems here, which is you know how much of an overlap should there be um, for us to say that there isn't a difference or how much of how much space should there be between the bars before we say there isn't it's it's quite hard to you know measure that uh, enter the t-test of course uh, which you as you may know that p-value gives you a very very clear and definite measure um, of whether you can say that uh, a difference between two groups uh, is significant or not. But as I just said, uh, this really only works between two groups. So it's a bit problematic here having three groups. Those of you who know your statistics know that I probably should be using a different type of test, uh, an ANOVA. Uh, but for the purpose um, of what I'm trying to demonstrate here, I'm going to use this. And let's just compare the first two groups, which is control versus nitrogen fertilizer. So let's hide uh, this graph and let's go ahead and do that. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is select any empty cell uh, and enter a formula, a really simple formula, don't worry, that will tell Google Sheets um, to uh, look at the two sets of data that I'm comparing and to provide that p-value uh, once it's performed the t-test. So this is what I do. Select an empty cell, hit equals, and then type t-test in. You'll see that it, it um, I guess, uh, recommends t-test uh, from uh, a range of drop-down options. So it prompts me to enter the first range, which I will here. So just highlight all of those numbers. Once again, uh, be careful not to highlight any of the uh, words. Uh, none of these numbers also should have like any letters in there, like, you know, five uh, CM centimeters, like that's not counted uh, as a, uh, a number. So just numbers, uh, comma, and then input my second range, which is gonna be, oops, not that, which is gonna be this, comma, and now specify whether it's a one or two tailed test. In this case, it's gonna be two tailed, right there, comma. And then finally specify um, whether it's gonna be a paired or unpaired test. If you need a bit more information, just click that, learn more about t-test and it kind of ex explains like what sort of numbers you should be putting in. Uh, in this case, it's an unpaired test because I'm testing different plants um, using different treatments. Um, so two, close brackets and just like that, magic, it's as easy as that. It's provided the p-value uh, after performing a, a t-test on these two groups. Uh, and so of course, that value is less than 0 0.05. And so I can say that the null hypothesis is rejected, which means that there is a significant difference uh, between those two groups, hooray. Uh, now the video sort of ends there. You can go ahead and conduct all your t-tests like this, but I'll show you a second way of doing it too, um, using that add-on that I um, demonstrated in the previous video. So XLM Minor Analysis Tool Pack, if you don't have that, go to Add-ons and just search for that. Start, um, which will open the toolbar to the right, and this time scroll down to the bottom to select t-test. Now, um, it's a, there's a bit of a difference here, which is that you have a few different options. And so from the start, you need to decide whether it's gonna be a paired or unpaired test. In this case, it's um, unpaired, but with equal variance. So I'll choose that second one. Uh, so just like before, let's select uh, the first column of numbers, put that in range one, select the second column, put that in range two, and then select where my output range is gonna go. So let's just uh, select this over here, output range, and hit OK. Now, this time it gives me lots of information. It provides uh, the mean, variance, a whole bunch of different things. But what I'm interested in is the p-value. So the p-value, uh, this time it, it tells me the p-value if it was one tail or two tailed. So I guess you make the choice after. Uh, in this case, I know it's a two tailed uh, t-test that I'm looking at. And so that is my p-value right there that I'm interested in, which I'll just highlight really quickly. And let's compare that to the number that was obtained before. And you'll see that it is exactly the same well, actually that last digit is different. Hmm, interesting. That probably has to do with a rounding error. Oh, someone should do a bit more 
study into that. Uh, but there you have it. That's the second way of doing it. That to me is um, maybe a few extra steps there using XLM uh, minor. Uh, but um, it provides a bit more information if that's um, useful to you. Uh, but otherwise, there you have it. So long as you have your data clearly set out, uh, and if you know whether you're doing a one or two tailed test, whether it's paired or unpaired, it is literally that easy. Type a few things in and the p-value is provided to you for you to interpret and use uh, in your reports and in your experiments and writing. So all the best with that and thanks for watching.